The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can. I'm caught in the grips and I can't shake free. I thought I could control it. Now it's controlling me. Your freedom starts with you forgiving you because God has already thrown it in the ocean blue. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's Matthew 5 and 6. Hello, you've tuned in to Poet Ministry Presents and this is Yvette Wilburn, your hostess, and I greet you in Christian love. Poet Ministries is a Christian writing ministry that puts out eternal truths through poetry. And these truths are deeply rooted in the Word of God. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you humbly as we know how. Praising you because you're worthy to be praised. Lifting you up and magnifying your name because you're worthy. We ask that you cover us in the blood of Jesus, forgive us for our sins, and continue to strengthen our hands to do the work that you put before us. Bless our loved ones, our family, and our friends, and even our enemies. We ask you to give us peace, joy, and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. We ask for wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So, this is part two. The show was called Hopefulness. And so, this is part two of Hopefulness. I had read, in the last show, I read from Patricia King's book, 31 Decrees of Blessing. And now I'm going to read the decrees. There's ten different decrees. I decree that I am strong and courageous and careful to always do according to God's word and guidance with total confidence that I will have success wherever I go. I decree that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. This is my heritage as a servant of the Lord. I decree that the Lord has given me authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I decree God has made me more than a conqueror in all things, overwhelmingly conquer through him who loves me. I decree no temptation will overtake me because God is faithful and will not let me be tempted beyond what I can bear. He will also provide a way out so that I can endure it. I decree that God always leads me in triumph in Christ. I decree that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal. Wait a minute, I'm not carnal. I'm not carnal. Um. I decree that the weapons of my warfare are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, speculations, and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. I decree I have on the full armor of God, which enables me to stand my ground when facing evil after I have done everything I stand. I am I decree that I am an overcomer because greater is he that is in me than is in the world, he who is in the world. I decree because I am born of God, I have overcome the world. Now, those decrees, huh, were to go with blessed to conquer. So, 
I'm not going to read the other degrees. We we just going to talk about hope. Right? Hope. Hope springing eternal. Um it said that if dreams die, the this Langston Hughes says this. If dreams die, life is like a broken wing bird that cannot fly. Um something about uh dreams deferred let's see. But I'm going to look up some scriptures for hope in the Bible. Because a lot of people have lost hope. You know, and uh, it says 50 Bible verses that bring peace and comfort. But let's see. Nope, I don't want that. I want Romans 15 and 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Hebrews 6 and 19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and Secure. So here's the 25 top. I'm not going to read all 25 of them. But. You know. Jeremiah 29 and 11. There's a whole scripture for real. For I know the plans I have for you. Declares the Lord. Plans for welfare. And not evil. To give you a future and a hope. I'm going to read this from James, not James, yeah, the King James Version. What was that, Jeremiah? Yeah, because, I don't know about that. Jeremiah 29 and 11 reads, reads, hmm. That's 10. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Romans 15 and 13. I just read you that. So I'm going to go with Romans 12 and 12. Romans 12 and 12. Says, let's see, where's Romans? Acts. Romans. I remember Acts, Romans, and Corinthians. Ark. Now. Okay, 12. Oh, yeah, I got to read the thing in here, too. 12 and 12. 12 and 12 is that that's 9 these numbers are so little rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation continuing steadfastly in prayer okay now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen and then I'm going to read, wait on the Lord. I am going to read that. One of my poems. Wait on the Lord. Ooh, I feel so nice. Wait on the Lord. Where is wait on the Lord? Because you know, you're waiting 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait I say on the Lord. Psalms 24. No. Psalms 27 and 14. One of the reasons. That we don't experience. Ongoing success. Is because we don't. Want to wait on Jesus. The Lord promises. To never leave us. Nor forsake us. Waiting for anything or anyone is a hard place to be. Who wants to wait for what we want or need? You know, we want it now. However, we often find ourselves waiting for something or someone. We're waiting for somebody to, to decide. It's always a place of indecision and discomfort. But waiting is possible, but it's not easy. My apostle, Travis Mason, says <coughs> that waiting is warfare. What he taught us in that, what he taught us is that in waiting, we are warring to obtain something. Our weapons are worship, humility, patience, and faith. Sometimes God seems absent or far away. And because of our anticipation or unbelief, we let emotions and circumstances get in the way of our waiting. And we take matters into our own hands. The results are often not what we expect. We should always wait on God. He knows our future. Perfect example, Sarah and Abraham. God told Abraham he was going to be the father of many nations. But he hadn't had a baby with Sarah. Because he said both of them, they were going to be the parents. And they got to be well past childbearing years. You know, and even when God said to Sarah to, to, that when God said that Sarah was going to have a baby, she laughed. Like, I, <laughs> no. No baby coming out of here. And so she got this great idea. I'm going to give you my handmaiden and you can have a baby with her. That backfired on her though. Because the handmaiden tormented her. And every time she looked at her, the baby, it, it did something to her. So she made the girl leave. You know, and the girl didn't ask for all of that. And uh, he, he had to bring her back. But then Sarah did have the baby. She, she didn't believe it. See, sometimes our unbelief. She looked at her circumstances and didn't believe it. That's what I'm saying about my uh, my kidney. I'm saying, I'm looking at that it's taken so long for me to get this uh, placed on the, the transplant list. Every time it's time for me to get on this list, something else comes up. They said, you got to take this test. You got to do this. Oh, well, we seen some abnormal abnormalities you know so I said you know what I believe that God is just gonna heal the kidneys I have already you know um and so I don't have to get on a list you know I, I'm hoping for that but but see if I talk to somebody and I ask people about it oh that's never been done oh no chances are that never could happen no you're not going to dash my hope. I'm keeping it to myself. I'm telling y'all, but you know what I mean. 
I'm not finna go and ask nobody. Has have you ever seen this happen before? Cause I did, and they said no. We no, we never seen it happen before. So now I'm supposed to say I believe that God can do anything if He can make blind Bartimaeus see. He can open up the red sea. He can close the lion's mouth for Daniel. Surely, he can heal me. He 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 healed the woman with the issue of blood. It had been, what, 12 years, 18 years? A lot of years. <clears throat> and all she had to do was hope that she could touch the hem of his garment and then touched it. She became healed. And he said, your faith has made you whole. He said that a few times in the Bible. Your faith. It just as a centurion soldier. When he said, um, my daughter is sick. And he said, come on, I'm going to go home with you and heal her. And he said, no, you don't have to come. I'm, I tell somebody to go do something, and they go and do it. And it gets done. I don't have to go do it myself. Just send your word. And... Jesus was amazed by his faith. Faith will get you a long way. You know, that's why you can't. That's why I, I got to get to the part that I was going to get to. That's why we got to meditate on the word day and night. Because when the enemy is up against us, we need some word that is hidden in our heart that we can just say. Like, get the behind me, Satan. Or, um, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You know, you, you, I'm made in God's image. Or, if you can't think of any Bible, Bible verse, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That'll back them up. But, sometimes, God seems absent or far away. And it's because of our anticipation or our unbelief that blocks our blessings. So if, if you, let's say, you're believing for a, a spouse. Let's say you're believing for one. And... Some decoys come. Some counterfeits come. Or you could even be a decoy or a counterfeit yourself. You know? But if you trust God and you say, okay, God, you, 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 you put it before. And you say, God, like David said, should I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? You know, put it before him and say, well, okay, God, this is, ooh, ooh, it's, I, I know I met somebody one time, and I, I asked them, who sent you? You know, because there was so much opposition, and I know that God is not the father of confusion, but Satan is. You know, I'm like, where'd you come from? And who sent you? You know, and sometimes we got to ask that. And, and be ready for the answer. Because the answer can be glaring you right in the face. And you're like, you want what you want when you want. And, he, you know, and if you, you then train yourself 
that you want what you want when you want it, and you get what you want when you want it. Sometimes what you get is not what you want. You know. So anyway, wait on the Lord. <laughs> Jesus asked us to wait on him, for he is ever aware of our fate. Oh, Lord, when I'm troubled, teach me how to wait. Five minutes before the miracle, that's when I usually give in. But I want to be able to hold out and give God the glory in the end. I get so discouraged and try to do things my own way. I louse it up every time and never get a chance to say, I waited on the Lord through thick and thin. I accept his deliverance. Yes, he's my friend. I never get a chance to say that. I trudge on, never looking back, trying to find an easier, softer way. I patiently waited on the Lord is a phrase I rarely get to say. I need help right now. I can't take the delay. But wait, he says, my help is on the way. I know it looks like nothing to look forward to, but be still, my child. My hands are always reaching toward you. Oh, I'm waiting on you, Lord. I've done all that I know to do. I need my soul restored. I'm ready to wait on you. Yes, I'm yielded willing and curious to see just how my father will clear up this mess and reveal his message to me. Waiting has been difficult and I can most assuredly say it does get easier with practice once you get out of the way. For I've got the victory as well as the chance to say I waited on the Lord. What a glorious day. Dear God, help our unbelief. Help us to wait to hear from you. Help us to study to show ourselves approved. God, help us to wait when we don't know what to do. Take over our hearts and calm our fears. Restore our minds. Clear our heads. Regulate our thoughts. Give us peace in the process. Strengthen our faith. Renew a right spirit within us. Help us to encourage ourselves in your word. Help us to remember that there is nothing too hard for you. Just like you were with Joseph, Daniel, Noah, Esther, Naomi, and Ruth. I'm going to add my name. And Yvette. So shall you be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. With wings as eagles, with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Now, I'm going to read the daily devotion for uh, out of Matthew Henry devotion Bible. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. As the leader of, of great people, Joshua was to carry on the work that Moses had begun. If the government under his leadership was to be successful, he needed to carefully and faithfully keep the law of God. Joshua, a man of power and authority, had to observe the law of God himself and then see that the people observed it. No man's... Excuse me, no man's authority or honor put him above the law. So it doesn't matter if you're a mega preacher 
or a janitor. You should still meditate the law of God and be doers of it. And be the example. You know how people used to say, don't do what I do, do what I say. You know, or something like that. It, it was oxymoronish, to say the least. Because that, that, um, my daughter brought that to my attention one time. She said, you say that if I do this, I'm going to hell, but yet you do it. And I'm thinking, what? So we don't, we got to think about that. If we say, don't smoke, it's bad for you. And then you smoke, but you're telling your child not to smoke. You, you're confusing them. If you, if you don't want somebody to smoke, and you don't want to smoke, I mean, you don't want them to smoke, don't, don't you smoke. And I don't mean don't smoke in front of them. I just mean practice what you preach. You know, you, you say all of this stuff, but are we actually setting the example? I see why people say why would I want to serve that guy when you can be hypocritical? They, people should be able to look at your life by what you say, by what you do, how you act, and say, man, I used to know Yvette when she was, ooh. But if... God can do that for her. He can do that for me. What must I do to be saved? People should wonder that when they see you. What must I do to be saved? You mean to tell me that she she suffered this, this and that? And she's still standing? She's still praising God's name? She's still saying glory, hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. She's still saying that. So, what must I do? What must I do? Concerning the Bible, Joshua was charged to me meditate therein day and night so that he might understand it. All his orders to the people and all his judgments upon appeals made to him must be according to to the word of God. If any person's business could excuse him from, from this, wouldn't Joshua have been excused? We may learn from this that regardless of the rush of our business, we must not neglect the study of and the meditation on God's word. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he meditates day and night. Joshua was required to do what was written. It was not enough to hear. It is not enough to hear and read our Bible, to know and remember it, to admire and talk about it, but we must live according to it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. Those who meditate upon the great eternal truths of God's word and live according will receive a blessing for God shall give them the desires of their heart. The desires of their heart. So we must read the word more and more. I know that... Um, we we are we get so distracted by music, social media. I I had cut out TV for months, and um, now 
it's, it's easing back in, but I'm not watching the shows I used to watch. I'm watching stage plays. And they're, they're okay. It's just that it's a distraction. You know, I could, I could listen to Dappy T. Keys, um, instrumental music with scriptures. I listen to that sometimes when I want to go to sleep, you know, or when I'm at dialysis, you know, but the word is what's going to help us. Knowing the word for yourself. It's okay to listen to preachers. It's okay to have pastor and 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 let them speak what thus say the Lord. But you need to know what thus say the Lord for yourself too. You know, you can't just rely on what you learn on Sunday and Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever day your Bible study is. And then don't go back to it. You know, that that's one of the decisions that I made for um, this year. Especially since I want to write some books. I got to know what this book says in order to do that. Let's see. What, what was I going to read in here? Or did I read it? I think I did. But, um... I'm going to read some more of these. Oh, I wanted to read Send Me. I, oh, I got a little song for that. <clears throat> Lord, I, I'll go. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll go. Lord, I'll go. If the Lord wants somebody here, am I? Oh, Lord, send me. I may be motherless, but Lord, I'll go. I may be fatherless, but Lord, I'll go. I may be spouseless. But Lord, I'll go. I may be friendless. But Lord, I'll go. If the Lord wants somebody here and Am I? Oh Lord, send me. Wow. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other time, Samuel, Samuel, speak. And, oh, and Samuel said, and Samuel answered, speak, for your servant hears. That's Samuel, 1 Samuel 3 and 10. And that story about Hannah was in Samuel. 1 Samuel. Where is God sending you? Does he want you? Does he want to send you to the nations? He may want to send you to your school, your job, coffee shop, the hardware store, post office, hospital, or anywhere. Where you go. You just don't know who's watching you. Everybody is searching for something to believe in. There's so much unbelief and deception in the world today. In a world so full of chaos and evil, it's hard to weed out the good from the bad. But if you live according to God's word, he will direct your path. We must speak words of hope, 
and encouragement into lifeless and hopeless situations. Let us go where God sends us and do what he says. Send me. Send me, Lord. I'm more than willing to go. I'm prepared to tell of God's goodness to people who don't already know. Once I get their attention, I won't fail to mention the wonderfully exciting good news that God's own son, Jesus, came to restore what Adam's disobedience made us lose. Jesus has redeemed us and our restoration is guaranteed. Where we once were held captive, by his blood we've been miraculously free. Send me to the mountains, even unto the ends of the earth. Wherever you send me, Lord, I'll tell them all of your great worth. I'll tell them that you are the one on whom they can depend and that you won't forsake them. And you are their most faithful friend. Jesus, you are the master healer. This and more will I convey. I'll be ever mindful to repeat what you tell me to say. I'll tell them that we all have power, so let's demonstrate it out in the field. I'll tell the world that Jesus is coming back and more of God's glory will be revealed. So with haste, turn to God and repent. He wants to get us back to his original intent. I'll tell everybody about your grace and majesty and all that's been done to make us free. All I ask in return, Lord, is that you continue to use and send me. Dear God, give us your power to conquer fear, circumstances, oppositions, and ourselves to do your will and to go where you send us. Help us to remember that you are with us and that our steps are ordered by you. Give us the faith that promotes action and empowers us to follow through to the end. Lord, let our lives give you the glory that is due your matchless name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. No, here am I. Send me. That was Isaiah 6 and 8. So, you got to read the word, you got to understand the word, you got to meditate on the word, apply it to your life, be doers of the word, not hearers only, do, be kind to people. We're in this world of, full of hopelessness. Let's try to spread some hopefulness. Tell your testimonies so that people will know. Because the enemy will say, oh, God can't bring you out of that. No, 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 no. God can't bring you out of that. You, you, you know, the doctor already told you that. You, you know, How many people do you know that said they only had six months to live and it's ten years later and they're still living? You know, we have to just trust that God knows what's best for us. And that his will will be done. And that we have access to him through Jesus. So I think I am going to do the invitation. I want to do that more and more. The um, What must I do to be saved? I know that... Um, a friend of mine said to me, um, Yvette, what, all your poems have to do with people already saved. They already know the lingo. They, you know, what about the people who are not set free from sin, that are yet sinners? What about the people who don't even know about Jesus because I, I I knew a girl that she knew about Jesus but she didn't know about Satan she didn't think that Satan was real she didn't think that hell was real she didn't think that 
she, she, she believed in a whole bunch of other stuff, you know. And so, what about those people that don't even know? I, 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 I was listening to a testimony um, on the show that I was watching, and they were saying that um, they told some Muslims about Jesus and they they converted you know so it it, it it's worth you know because God Jesus said if you deny me God well God said if you deny me let me see I, I'm gonna get that right I gotta get that right if you deny me let's see then I'm going to deny you. Oh, Jesus said it. I'm going to deny you in front of my father. If you deny me before men, it's Matthew 10 and 33. I'm doing good at this, with this Bible. It used to be a time I would be fumbling around, trying to sing the song. Yeah, we put the the words to the the books of the Bible to the words to the melody of um, Wade in the Water, and I taught it to my Sunday school class. This is ten thirty three. Hmm. Wow. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father. Who was in heaven? I would hate to get to heaven. And, uh, well, he didn't even say you would get to heaven. I would hate to, um, have Jesus deny me in, in to his father. Like, no, she, she never even talked about me. She never even invited people to know me. She, she went along with the world. You know, um, we just came out of the Christmas season, and um, for me, every day is Christmas, you know, because I'm grateful that that God did send his son. So I was going to read, do the um, invitation. So in, with the invitation, you admit that Jesus is Lord. You believe that he, um, God raised him from the dead, and you confess that you're a sinner. So, that's the ABCs of it. That's I learned that in Sunday school. Dear Lord, repeat this after me. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that He died for our sins. You raised Him from the dead. I open my heart and my life to your will and your way. I trust and follow you to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes. So, I'm going to read what must I do to be saved. The Bible says, trust God. But what does that really mean? How can I trust, depend on something that I've never seen? I don't know where to go or how to become free. So, where is salvation for a sinner like me? I've been there 
with no hope, running around like a fool, trying to hold on to the lessons I learned in Sunday school. No joy nor peace did I feel. The all-consuming pain was so unreal. I've searched bars, beds, and motives of friends to fill this void till the pain would end. I heard some rumors about salvation for a sinner like me. They said Jesus saves and could set me free. But I wondered how because sin had me bound. No way of escape for me had been found. I wanted to know more, but I didn't know what to believe. I was still confused about Adam and Eve. Tell me something new. I'm tired of the hype. Where's, salva where's salvation for people of my type? Let me help you with the missing link. Salvation is much closer than you think. I had heard so much rhetoric, it was more than my field. Then, here come the saints shouting, turn over your will. Actually, I didn't want to hear what they had to say. As far as I was concerned, I was going to hell anyway. Help is near. You can stop all your groanings. Turn your Bible to chapter 10, verse 9 of Romans. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. What you say and believe must be on one accord. I believed in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's the plan of salvation. Salvation. But more needs to be said. I got into a word church and grew in the Lord. I attended Bible study to stay on one accord. I called on the name of Jesus and I became free. I finally found salvation for a sinner like me. So because no sin is worse than any other sin, you know, a, a sin is a sin is a sin. So it don't matter what you do, just the fact that you admit and acknowledge that you know it is wrong, you do it, and you want to stop. And you're going to stop. And you're going to need help to stop sometimes. Because I know I could not stop using drugs. I couldn't. I, I, I had all these. I couldn't stop smoking cigarettes. I had all of these plans on how I was going to stop. All of these formulas and nothing worked. Until I surrendered and said, Lord, I need you to take this from me. I can't do it by myself. And that's when I was able to stop. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. Hmm. That's Acts 3 and 19. I think I'm going to read caught in the grip, because I just thought of that. Yeah, caught in the grip. Where this chapter is that? All right, caught in the grip. But sometimes we get caught in the grip. I think that's page forty-five. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Addiction is a form of idolatry. It has a grip on many of our lives. Sometimes we are filled with feelings of hopelessness or despair and we want to fill a void in our life. We look for something to replace those feelings. However, whatever we choose to use to fill that void or emptiness in our lives, 
really never works. Sadly, what we chose to use, what we choose to use, drugs, sex, money, alcohol, gambling, things, relationships, food, people, or whatever else, we can't get enough of it. We must have one more of something else to satisfy our need. Once we feed the addiction, no matter what it is, we need more and more. It could be the euphoric, euphoric, overjoyed, exciting feeling from drugs, the exhilaration, high spirits from gambling, the mellow, calm, cool feeling from drinking, or the comfort, ease, peace from food, or any other feelings these substances temporarily supply. The truth of the matter is that these are only feelings. We are still empty inside. My personal testimony, for me, I had a gaping, hurting hole in my gut. And I tried to fill that hole with drugs, sex, alcohol, food, and people. However, all of those alleged cures were short-lived. Nothing worked. Once I stopped beating around the bush, I realized that the only thing that can fill that hole, emptiness of void, is God. I asked him to fill me with more of him. I sought God by learning more of his word, found in the Bible. The more I read the Bible, the more I got to know him. Then I was able to relax and allow his power and spirit to move through me. He is my refuge. I can hide in him. In the past, I looked for peace in all the wrong faces and searched for it in all the wrong places. After I surrendered and gave my life completely to him, he came to live in me. He filled me with his presence and his peace. So I'm caught in the grips and I can't shake free. I thought I was controlling it. Now it's controlling me. No, I thought I could control it. But now it's controlling me. I'm doing things that I don't want to do. I'm going places that I don't want to go. I'm hanging out with all sorts of people that I don't even know. This addiction is getting the best of me. Help me, Lord, because I want to be free. I want to stop, but I can't put it down. I don't want to be shackled, yet I'm still bound. I'm caught in its grip, and I can't even cry. I'm too scared to live and too scared to die. This is a stronghold that I can't break, but stopping it is the right decision to make. God can conquer anything. I just need to let him in. I must surrender this addiction in order to win. In order for me to win. Dear God, take these strong desires from me. Please take drugs or other substances that help me to hide from you. Take them. Please help me to recognize the fact that anything that we esteem more than you is an idol. And that could be Facebook. That could be relationships. That could be television. Distraction. If you, anything you spend more time on than you spend doing the will of God is an idol. So you might say, I just watch so and so and so and so. But if you, you read the Bible once a week, but you watch the show every night, or you watch, you binge watch. I'm a binge read the Bible. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Lord, anything that I have made an idol or gods in my life with a little G, please tear them down. Help me to embrace you more fully and to be in your will and your way. I know and believe you can and will sustain me and keep me safe. I praise you for changing my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You should have no other gods before me. That's Exodus 20 and 3. 
So my, my quick testimony is that I started smoking cigarettes when I was about 16, 15 or 16. Started getting high, started drinking, started doing everything that I shouldn't have been doing and was addicted. And then I started having sex, addicted to that too. Um, just doing everything. And now I've been delivered. I, I, I stopped smoking cigarettes, sm stopped smoking drugs, stopped drinking, stopped fornicating. And it wasn't any power of my own. I, I couldn't stop. I tried many, many times. But I got 34 years clean with no alcohol, no drugs. And I got 32 years, no cigarettes. So, it's possible. I'm not going to say how many years I've been abstinent from sex. That ain't nobody's business. I'm telling my husband that on, on my wedding night. That's that's what I'm going to reveal that that number. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I am going to close out with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. You Thank you very much for watching the show. Comcast 20 viewers, YouTube viewers, or however else you're watching this. Um, be sure to get my book, $13.99, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Mr. C's, God's World, Baker's Bible, or you can call me if you want an autograph copy, 313-850-3008. Um, Thanks for watching, and remember, relax, God's in charge. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can. I'm caught in the grips and I can't shake free. I thought I could control it. Now it's controlling me. Your freedom starts with you forgiving you because God has already thrown it in the ocean blue. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's Matthew 5 and 6. This is your girl Vicky Winans and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching Bell Global Network.